everyone, Johnny Keck over at EMP Futures and thank you for returning. In this video we're going to go and show you how to navigate and use the charts within Market Delta Cloud. Again, free platform available at AMP Futures as a web-based platform. All right, so let's uh, get right into it. This is the chart that we have open at this moment. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and show you a couple things first. So the chart from top to bottom, you're going to see right here this little menu bar. So this is the September mini S&P chart. It's showing a one-minute chart. That's the first thing that you want to look at to identify what you're looking at in terms of what symbol and what time frame. So it will show the symbol, and then it will also show the time frame. So that, that means one minute. Now, one thing that you want to know that's important, on the top right corner of the chart application here, you can see a little button there with three dots. If you click on that, it's going to collapse this little menu now. And this is where you're going to be able to get in there and start making changes. So first things first, let me just go ahead and get rid of that for a second. I'm going to click here. You can also access this at the very same menu if you click here. So there's two ways of accessing. You can either click the three dots or... You can just click on the symbol on the top left corner of the chart, and it brings down this little menu option that you see. So you have chart studies, this is the settings option, and then you have drawing tools. All right, so if you want to change the symbol of the chart, just left click on the symbol itself, and then you will see add a symbol. And then just like we've demonstrated throughout the other videos, you're just going to do the same thing. Just type in the symbol that you want to change it to. So ENQU6, for example, mini NASDAQ. And now the chart changes to mini NASDAQ, as you can see. So again, click on the symbol title, title, and then just type in the uh, symbol that you want to change the chart to. So CLE and CLE and 6, July crude. And now the chart has been changed. All right, same thing goes with the time frame. If you click here, click on the time frame. These are the available time frames that you can use. So it's just a matter of selecting whichever one you want to use. So for example, I want to change that to a five minute chart. Now the time frame has changed. All right, so click again, drop down. Let's say I want to change that to a daily time frame, one day. Now it's changed to a daily time frame. All right, so that's fairly simple. Let's change that back to a one-minute time frame for now. All right, and then uh, the scaling of the chart. If you want to make sure that, let's say, if you, I normally like using the negative and plus. You can independently change the scales. So, for example, if I take my left click on the right side price column here and I drag it down, that's going to compress it, as you can see, or expand it if you drag it up. All right, uh, same thing with the bottom time scale here. If you drag to the right, that's increasing bar spacing, which is going to make those bars look a lot bigger. Or if you drag it to the left while holding down your left click, that's going to decrease bar spacing, which makes those bars look a lot smaller. All right, now the reason why I like using the negative and plus sign because it's, a, it's almost like a universal scale. So if you just, it'll not only change the up and down axis, it'll just properly scale the chart based on how, what type of uh, trade space you're using. So in this case, this particular trade space, what I mean by trade space, these are the trade spaces, the setups, and we'll cover that in a different video. That's why the chart is very, fairly, fairly small with the specific tra trade space, which sometimes you might run into problems. It might be a little inconvenient in trying to find a price range outside of what you see in the chart. Uh, so you might want to change perhaps the trade space to something bigger. As you can see here, that's a bigger chart. So it's all a personal preference. But ideally, you know, if you want a bigger chart, then you're probably going to want to use a different trade space. So, but in the meantime, the plus sign will essentially expand the up and down axis and at the same time increase bar spacing. If you hit the negative sign, that's decreasing bar spacing and it's properly scaling the up and down axis as well. So generally when I change the scaling of the chart, I like using the negative and plus signs. It just acts as a universal scale. It's a lot easier for me to use. Uh, but again, it's all personal preference. All right, so let me just make this a little bigger. Yeah, that looks good. All right, and then go back into the menu here. Uh, if you click the property section here, you have time zone. So if you change the time zone, you can use your current location. So if I hit that, it'll just basically change the time zone to reflect local PC time on my computer. All right, so that's generally uh, how I like my charts displayed. I like the time zone on the bottom of the chart to reflect uh, where I'm located, which is at this moment 7.19 p.m. California time. All right, and then you have these buttons here, charts and studies and select tools. All right, so for example, if you want to change the different chart type, it's as, simply, as simple as clicking the chart button and then you'll see the different chart styles. So it's as easy as left-clicking whatever chart type you want to change it to. So right now I'm using a candlestick chart. If I want to change it to a bar chart, now it's changed to a bar chart, colored bars, line chart, and so forth. All right, so you have, you know, for example, here's a wrinkle chart. Uh, let me change the symbol to something a little more presentable. All right, let's go back, and let's change that back. Let's try, uh, let's see here, that's drawing tools. 
let's go to uh, let's try a hike and ashing chart. All right, so this is pretty much you're just going to identify the chart type that you want and simply left click that specific chart type to activate it. Technical indicators and studies. If you left click on the studies button, you will see indicators A through Z. All right, let me change this back to a candlestick chart. All right, now here. So A through Z, you're going to scroll down the list and find whichever indicator that you want to add. So let's say I want to add uh, the Bollinger Bands indicator. So if I left click on the Bollinger Bands indicator, the first thing, and this is what I was telling you about earlier, because of this trade space container, uh, let me do this. Let's do this. I'm going to close this out. Let's go to the AMP workspace for a second. I have bigger charts to work off. And let's just work off this for now. So I'm going to click here, go back to Studies, and let's go back to Bollinger Bands. And even still, the charts aren't that big because I'm using a four trade space split layout. So you know, again, ideally, maybe this would be a better example. Uh, but I'll show you how to use that in a different video. But if you notice, I can't move this box. So you're wondering, okay, how do I see the bottom half of that, that property window? Just scroll down the chart to see it. See that? So that's, that's pretty much what you have to do. All right, so you're going to make your changes accordingly, you know, whatever values you'd like to use. Uh, if you want to change the colors of how the indicator will be displayed, you want to click the little box there, scroll up, and you can go ahead and identify whichever color you'd wish to use. What I normally do is I like to just add the indicator as default. Of course, the, the input values, of course, are all based on personal trade preference. But the colors, I normally like to add whatever the default is first. And then once it's added, just see what it looks like. And if I don't like it, then I'll make my changes accordingly. All right, so in this case, I have the indicator added. I, I, let's say I don't like that look. So now I'm going to hover my mouse cursor. If you notice, when you hover your mouse cursor over the indicator, it will highlight or bold, as you can see. All right, so when it highlights, now you can right-click with your mouse, and you can either delete it, or you can go back to edit, and now it gets you right back into the property section, and you can start making your changes. So let's say I want to change, instead of having the, the Bollinger Band top as black, uh, maybe we'll change that to red. And the median, I'll change that to, let's say, kind of a teal color. And then the bottom, will change that to orange. All right, now I'm going to create, and now you can see the difference. So that looks a little more presentable, as the three colors are different. And that's pretty much how you make changes if you already have an indicator applied onto the chart. Uh, if I hover my mouse cursor, I can right-click and delete the indicator. So what I've just demonstrated is pretty much how you're going to use all the indicators. You're going to click the Studies button. You're going to locate the indicator that you want to add. So let's say this time we'll add the Elder Ray indicator. Left-click it. All right, now it's going to bring up the property section of that, of that specific indicator. Of course, every indicator's property menu is going to be different from one another since every indicator function is different. And then, of course, you're going to set your values and change your colors accordingly and just hit Create. And now you have the Elder Ray's indicator added. All right, now when, this is a, an example of a subchart. So the Bollinger Bands is an overlaying indicator. Now I'm going to go ahead and collapse this so I have a little more space on the chart itself. What happened, the difference between an overlaying indicator is it will overlay the actual indicator over the candles of the chart. All right, in this case, this is a subchart, so it created a secondary chart under the main chart. And you can see the menu option right on the chart. Now if you want to move it to the top half of the chart, you can do that by hitting the little up arrow right there. It brings it back up, bring it back down. If you click that little gear icon, it brings you right into the property section of the indicator. And of course the X closes out the indicator. All right, so that's pretty much how to apply technical indicators onto a chart. All right, so let's resize this a little bit. It's kind of small. There we go. All right. All right, so then we're going to go back. And that's pretty much technical indicators. Now this little button here is the preferences menu for the already cover that. It's really just the only thing you can really do is change the time zone. Now here are the drawing tools. So if you click on the drawing tools, these are the available drawing tools to you uh, f that are available to you. So you have line, horizontal, for vertical, rectangle. So pretty much pretty standard drawing tools. Uh, there are a few um, nice ones that you see like Fibonacci's for example. So if I click on Fibonacci, what will happen is it will activate a crosshair and then you can also select what type of Fibonacci you'd like to use, whether it's a retracement, arc, fan, or time zone. Now if I go ahead and Let's say I want to draw a fib from this top bar here. I'm going to take my mount, the, the cross here. I want to make sure I, I'm right on that little top candle there. I'm going to left click once, and I'm just going to move the mouse cursor. Right now, I'm not holding down the left click. I'm just simply moving the mouse cursor. I'm happy with that display. I'm going to left click to apply it. Now it's on there. All right, so now to remove it, hover your mouse cursor over the drawing tool. You'll see these dots appear. The dots letting you know that you're hovered over that drawing tool. So now you're going to right click to delete it to get rid of the crosshair, because normally what happens is when you activate a drawing tool, it will automatically by default activate a crosshair. So when you remove the indicator, that crosshair is still there. So if you want to get rid of that crosshair, just go back to the drawing tool, scroll up, and just make sure you select none, and the crosshair goes away. All right, so one more demonstration. Select tool, the drawing tools. Let's do a regular trend line this time. 
crosshairs activated as you can see. Now we're going to identify a level that we want to draw the drawing tool from. Left click once, just move your mouse cursor once you're happy with the display as you can see. Left click to apply and now the drawing tool is applied. Alright, you can go on there, right click to delete it. Alright, so what happens also when you add any specific drawing tool, you'll have different options if you want to thicken up the weight meaning to make the indicator look a little wider or skinnier. Uh, you can also change the style of the indicator, whether it's a dotted line or a solid line, and you can also change the indicator, uh, the color as well. So normally what will happen is when you add, so if you notice the property section here is a little different for regular trend line, but watch what happens when I go back to Fibonacci. All right, now you can see the menu options is a bit different. So you can see you can set the levels. You can you can you can choose which levels you want displayed or which ones you don't do not want displayed. You can change the colors as well from here. All right, and that's pretty much drawing tools. Very simple, very straightforward, very easy to do. And other than that, that's pretty much working with charts. Uh, the charts are pretty straightforward. As I mentioned, uh, the main thing that if if you're not really satisfied with the region of how big your chart display is is like in this case, you can see the chart's pretty small then uh, let, we're going to take you into the next video on how to organize and, and work with uh, the trade spaces, pretty much the different layouts that you can use within Market Delta Cloud uh, so that you know you're not limited to just you know using the particular setups that you that come default by the, with the platform. So uh, if you have any questions about this, guys, feel free to give us a call. We're a 24-hour support team at 312-893-6400, extension 1. That will direct you to our help desk. Otherwise, stay tuned and updated on our YouTube channel. Our URL is www.youtube.com forward slash AMP Futures. Again, that's www.youtube.com forward slash AMP Futures. Thank you for listening in. We look forward to seeing you in the next video, and happy trading.